up following this trench and this way so now we're finding some bedrock samples which consist of pyrite and that block in there is sphalerite little stringers all throughout so definitely have some uh, some pyrite and sphalerite in these Let's go take a look at some more. So take a look at these. These are also from bedrock. And these are outside of the copper zone. Or what we thought was the copper zone. But we have more copper. So it seems you have arsenopyrite in the one zone. Overlapping calcopyrite. And that's overlapping sphalerite. And then overlapping more calcopyrite. And overlapping more pyrite if that makes sense. So lots and lots of samples. Oh look, there's some arsenopyrite in these too. I think this zone is not just a copper zone, but I think it's a zone of many sulfides. So we are now 40 meters outside of what we thought was the end of the copper zone and we're finding sphalerite, calcopyrite, more calcopyrite, again calcopyrite and these ones are all bedrock chip samples. So in all reality our zone is probably close to 75 meters wide where you have multiple sulfides primarily calcopyrite we got some more samples we're hammering out here and look more sphalerite more sphalerite Touched a host rock. 60 meters away where my truck is, is where we thought the copper zone ended. And right here, what do we have? More bedrock exposed because of rain. So you can see all the oxidation. That right there has disseminated calcopyrite throughout that whole piece. There is sphalerite going through there and arsenopyrite. This is a piece of your bedrock. You have disseminated calcopyrite. Same with this. Again, more bedrock. Quite a substantial amount of pyrite and calcopyrite. 